when you start this kind of project, you need to have a vision what the final game is going to look like. It has been definitely a, a roller coaster of some sort. Icefleck Studios is a game studio and we are located in Tampere, Finland. Uh, we have been working with Paradox for the last three years with this project and before that we were just fans of the games that they made and published. This in a sense has been a dream come true to be part of that family that makes the games that we love so much ourselves. As a producer, I am the connection point in between stakeholders and everybody else uh, inside the studio, like artists and designers and QA and uh, programmers. As a gaming designer, I'm responsible for feature designs, uh, creating at least the first batch of content for those new designs, uh, a lot of game balancing, and some other miscellaneous stuff like uh, appearing in streams and that sort of stuff. Studio manager is responsible for the everyday operations at the studio, but it also is a person who is responsible for the long-term vision of the studio. What kind of games we are making, how we are making them, and what is the future where we are going with the company or the studio. Surviving the Aftermath is a post-apocalyptic colony builder uh, with a strong emphasis on, on the world map or well, the overworld as well. The premise is that what would happen if our world would face something so big that most of the mankind would be devastated and how would those who survive live after that. And that was the idea and the inspiration what we wanted to see and what we wanted to get answers to. There's many obstacles against you, from the environment itself to bandits and, and raiders, slave traders and, and different catastrophes. The world shouldn't feel like completely devoid of any, any positive aspects, so you'll have different people coming together and trying to like strive in this really, really hostile world. I would say that surviving the aftermath fits into management genre into more challenging end of the spectrum. It is not a relaxing game in a sense, as many other management games are, but it is more challenging and it, it keeps you on your toes while you are playing. It constantly throws new challenges in front of you and you need to survive through those challenges and learn about your mistakes and create a better society through those mistakes and learnings you face. The early access uh, time for this game was a common decision in between uh, us and then Paradox Publishing. The unexpected challenge for me uh, uh, in early access was that we have to put features together like bit by bit. So we have to be really careful on, on deciding what to do first, what to do later, and maybe what to cut out completely so that the, the feature itself is always complete and playable throughout the early access. In a management game, Sandra, the balance is a key and getting that balance correct takes a lot of time. And through early access, it's been a great way to make it this kind of game because getting feedback from the players about balance and other issues is very crucial to get the end result right. Often you sort of dwell in the dark in, in terms of how players react to whatever you're designing. So getting that feedback straight away and maybe correcting uh, something with it is, is really, really super useful. 
if we look at the update, the first early access update and compare it to the newest one, we have added plenty of new features and we have improved a lot of features and even the visuals have been tweaked. So you can really see the difference. One example about how different pieces of a puzzle fall in place and how they affect the entire gameplay and the feel of it is the update called Nuclear Winter where we added temperature gameplay and also the winter catastrophe into the game. We had several systems in place much earlier in the development, like for instance production of firewood and temperature and catastrophes, but not before this update, they, they didn't affect each other that much. But now you need to worry about production of firewood and production of food, because you can't produce food during winter. So preparing for something worse that is coming, it is essential part of the game, which wasn't that way before. And you see how different aspects of the game that are separate to each other combine into an intertwined system that you need to master while playing the game. As a management game, it's the building side is uh, similar to what you might expect from, from a game in this genre. But I think that the overworld is something that's rarely seen in this scale in, in any other games. So we're trying to bring those two bits together into one cohesive whole. So the survival aspect continues both in the greater world but also feeds back to the colony, colony map and, and back into the exploration again. We are very close to the final thing at this point. It's a magnificent thing to see how all, the, all those small details are now in place that were only part of the vision before this.